Hey guys, hope everyone's doing well. Um, I miss you guys. I miss being in front of you guys. Recordings always feel like weird. Um, but, you know, that's what we have to do right now. Um, so, hopefully you guys are holding in. I like reading your responses. Um, sounds like some of you guys really like a lot of things about online learning. Um, and some of you guys are having, a, you know, some natural troubles about it too. Um, but hopefully we won't have to do this for too much longer. Um, so keep your fingers crossed and hope that uh, people stay in so we don't actually have to keep on doing this. Um, the more we stay in, the less time we actually have to do it. Um, we just have to make sure that we get through this initial phase. Um, but if we keep on passing the virus around, then we're going to have to stay in longer. Anyway, let's get to class. Um, today we're talking about creating basic geometric designs. Um, again, this is really handy um, because when we're making logos, when we're doing things that are more commercial like that, um, what's important is not realism, but what's more, more important is something that is easily recognizable, easy to reproduce, um, and has a lot of high impact. So uh, as you saw in the slideshow, um, if you looked at the slideshow first, a lot of logos um, incorporate very simplified uh, designs. Um, today we're practicing animals, um, but uh, you can see in a bunch of other logos how they um, also incorporate very simplified shapes, simplified um, drawings. So the key for today is that we want to recreate um, some of these example ones so we get the idea of how we simplify a design. Um, you can see uh, even with something uh, as simple as a, cir uh, as a circle shape, or really pie shapes out of a circle, you can create a lot of different animals. Um, and you can see that on the example chart uh, uh, on the slideshow, if you'd like. Um, today we're going to do emulation, meaning we're going to be um, recreating some of the abstracted animals uh, that we saw on that poster. Um, so you're going to want to take a look at that poster and pick an animal that you, uh, pick three animals actually, that you want to try recreating today. I'm going to run you how to do that um, by doing one. Um, I made my own scroll here. That's what you guys are going to be doing on um, Thursday is that you're going to be making your own versions of, of this in this style. Um, but today we are just starting with um, emulating it. So. Um, the first thing that we want to do is, um, of course, start up our drawing. If you don't, weren't here for the last lesson to do that, in Google Drive, if you hit New, you can go then to More, and then Google Drawing should be one of the options here. For me, it's the second one. Um, I've added a lot of weird stuff to my drive, so there's a lot of extra stuff in there. Um, so yours may not look exactly like it, but it should be one of the first few ones in there. Once you've got it started up, it'll pop up with a window like this, but yours will be blank rather than me having instructions here and my design. Yours should be just that checkerboard pattern. Um, much like before, we can find shapes underneath the shape button here, but we're going to be using them in a little bit more advanced way. Um, primarily, the tool that we've been using is this one that looks like a pie with a slice missing, like that. Now, one important thing when you're creating these shapes, to make them even, you're, wanna go, you're gonna wanna hold down the Shift key. So notice if I pull it out like this, it's gonna get all squished. If I hold down the Shift key, that's gonna keep things even. So even if I pull it out like that before, as soon as I hold the Shift key, you'll notice it's gonna snap to a wide, uh, not a wide, but an even layout. So I get an even circle like that. Again, without shift, notice I can do this. As soon as I hold shift and try to move, it's going to make it nice and even. That's key to getting nice shapes in, in most drawing programs, um, is holding down shift. Now notice this is going to do a three-quarter square. We're going to be using a lot of the advanced um, advanced shape tool uh, shape controls here, and that's just the adjusting shapes instructions here. On these kinds of shapes, you're going to notice that there are yellow tabs to change details about this shape. So here we have a three-quarter circle. If I take one of these yellow tabs, I can spin it around and I can make a half circle, or I can make a quarter circle. So the one that I'm going to be making is a crab. Looking at the crab poster, it looks like most of mine are actually half circles. So I'm going to adjust that than rather being a quarter circle to a half circle. 
Um, and then from there, I can then change that to the right color. That's going to be like a pinkish red. It's a little bit too red. I need to get more pink. Notice um, how I'm changing the fill is this paint bucket up here. But I don't quite have the pink range. If you find that you need a new color, you can hit the custom down here, and you're going to get this um, this uh, tool here, which allows you to select specific colors, mix your own colors. Um, so I'm going to find that kind of pinkish color there, and I think that's the one that they use the crab there, unless I'm slightly colorblind. So I've got that pinkish color, but you're going to notice in my drawing, I've got a black outline around the shape. So black outlines are control, or the outlines in general, are controlled by the button right next to that paint bucket. So up here where my mouse is right now, that's the fill, that's the paint bucket, the one that you choose, uh, that I just used to change the, uh, the circle to pink. Over here is the border color. If I click this, I can make it transparent, and you'll notice that black border around that pink goes away. So again, to get rid of that border, click your shape, go up to where it has that pencil next to the paint bucket, and then click transparent. And then you're going to get a nice clean shape. No border to it. Now one thing you're going to want to do during this is actually you're going to want to use copy and paste to make your shapes because all of these are even shapes. You'll notice that none of these except for the eyes are generally smaller than any of the other shapes. So all your circle shapes tend to be about the same size or based off the same kind of circle. So I can just copy and paste to get most of my shapes. But you'll notice I'm going to have to rotate them. You can rotate them by hand. You can do that by grabbing that tab here at the top and you can rotate them around like that. But you're going to sometimes end up with some uneven shapes that way. For instance, you might accidentally get it slightly crooked like that. Instead, what I like to do to make sure that things are exact are, is right click, or if you're on a Mac, control click. And then you can find the rotate options here, and that's going to get a much cleaner, more exact rotation of the shape. So you're not going to end up with any weird um, so, uh, weird rotation issues or anything being slightly off. And I can just keep on copying, edit, copy, and then pasting. <coughs> Rotating. And then placing them. You'll notice as I'm placing them, they're coming up with those red lines again to make sure that everything's aligned. So notice as I move it there, you'll notice I get that red line down the center to make sure that it's matched with that other claw. So I get a nice even placement. Whoops, I moved. Hopefully you guys are on mice. Trackpads are hard to do this with. I keep on moving at the last minute with my trackpad. There we go. Nope, still not even. Oh, I see. There we go. So that's the claws. Now the other two, sh uh, the other two parts, the legs and the eyes, are just from regular circles. So I can just take the full circle tool, go down below, and then notice if I make a new shape, I have to then change the outline, then change the color. But notice the color is saved underneath the custom ones. So it remembers what colors I used. So I'm going to copy and paste. There I have my legs. Then up here, I can put my eyes. I'm going to have to change those to black. And there we go. I've got my crab. Notice, however, my crab goes off the edge of the paper. I'm going to have to make them a little bit smaller. Now I could. That's going to super bother me. I'm going to fix that claw real quick. Sometimes you have to go in and actually like do it zoomed in so you get exactly what you want. There we go. That's that's much better. Let me zoom out. Ah, now the other now the other one's not touching. Hmm. 
again, notice some of the details you have to zoom in to actually get. There we go. Nice, even, nice, even. That looks nice and smooth. Okay, and let's go back out. Let's fit. But notice, now I have to shrink it down. Now I could shrink down everything individually, but that would be really, really, really hard um, because then I'd have to readjust everything and make sure that everything's in place. Instead, what I can do is I can, you'll notice when I'm on the black mouse tool, what I can do is draw an area over my crab. Whoops, I got the scroll too. Okay, so I've got two drawings on mine. What might actually be easier rather than drawing uh, drawing a square over it is uh, clicking the select tool, which is again that black mouse tool over there, holding down the shift key, and then clicking all the parts of my crab. You'll notice if I hold down shift, I can select many different objects. I can then right click on it. If you're on a Mac, again, that's control click. And then you can use the group command to make it one object. Now when I click any part of the crab, it's going to select the entire crab because it's treating it as one thing. That allows me to really easily resize my crab to any shape. But notice I squished my crab a little, little. so be careful because you can certainly warp your crab, your drawing like that. So much like we did before, you're going to have to hold down shift as you reshape. And that's going to keep it nice and even without squishing. So I can make it whatever size I want, and everything's going to be nice and even. Once you're done with all three of your animals, you can file, download as PNG to insert it inside your background. So once you go file, download, PNG, you can go back into um, your, oops, that is not the right slide. Let me go into the right slide. You can go into your slideshow and then insert your copy. To do that, you'll go insert, image, and if it's on your computer, it'll upload from your computer. I've got my untitled drawing here. And there you go. That's my drawing. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. Again, I am dedicated online between 8 to 1. I can always answer emails, but there might be a delay after 1 o'clock. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I hope everyone's staying safe, staying healthy. Bye, guys.